The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to Lesson 32 on your distance education program in chemistry for lower seat science. I am Longni Kingu Innocent, your chemistry teacher. We are still on the topic matter, properties and transformation and we are treating the subtopic, the atomic structure. This subtopic, atomic structure, will be treated in the following lessons. Discovery of the electron and the proton, discovery of the nucleus, discovery of the neutron and mostly experiment, mass number, atomic number, nuclide and isotopes, the mass spectrometer, uses of the mass spectrometer, nature and properties of ionizing radiations, nuclear reactions, rate of radioactive decay, review of more concept and atomic structure, electromagnetic spectrum and atomic spectra, atomic emission spectrum of hydrogen, ionization energy, experimental evidence of ionization energy, ionization energy and shells, ionization energy and subshells, atomic orbitals and quantum number, building up principle and electronic configuration. And finally, electron affinity as converse of ionization energy. Now, before beginning today's lesson, I'd like us to correct the assignment we had at the end of our previous lesson. Correction of assignment. A gas was injected into the radio valve at low pressure in order to determine its ionization energy. Given that current was detected in the ammeter when the grid voltage was 43.5 volt, determine A, the energy required to knock off one electron. Determine the energy required to knock off one electron. Now, the grid voltage given in the question is 43.5 volt, and the charge of an electron, the magnitude of the charge of an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 19 coulombs. Avogadro constant is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. We know that the energy required to knock off an electron, E, is equal to the magnitude of the charge of an electron times the grid voltage. So substituting the magnitude of the charge and the grid voltage with their values, we have the energy required to knock off an electron is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 19 coulombs times 43.5 volt. So simplifying this, we have 6.96 times 10 to the power negative 18 joules. Now the second part of the question, the ionization energy of the species in the radio valve. Now that we know the energy required to knock off an electron, what is the ionization energy of the species in the radio valve? Now we know that ionization energy is obtained by multiplying the energy required to knock off one electron by the Avogadro constant. Since Avogadro uh, ionization energy deals with one mole. So now if we do that, we have uh, ionization energy is equal to Q times V times L, where L is Avogadro constant. So substituting these variables with their real values, we have uh, ionization energy is equal to the energy required to knock off one electron times the Avogadro constant. Now the energy required to knock off one electron is 6.96 times 
times 10 to the negative 18 joules that we just calculated. To substitute in, we have 6.96 times 10 to the power negative 18 times 6.02 times 10 to the power 23. This is the Avogadro constant. And simplifying, we have 4.19 times 10 to the power 6 joule per mole. And this can also give us 4,190 kilojoules per mole. So the ionization energy of the species in the radio valve is 4,000. 190 kilojoules per mole. Today's lesson is titled Ionization Energy and the Shells. The outline of this lesson is as follows Objectives, Prerequisite, Ionization Energy and Shells, Evaluation, Assignment, and References. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to use the values of successive ionization energies of an element to deduce the number of shells, that is the energy levels of the element, and to also deduce the group number of the element. You should be able to plot graphs of a logarithm of successive ionization energy versus ionization number. In order to effectively understand this lesson, you must have mastered ionization energy and factors affecting the magnitude of ionization energy. Ionization energy and electronic structure. Now, the successive ionization energy of a particular species can give us these two pieces of information concerning the electronic structure of the species. The information are the existence of shells in the element or the existence of subshells. So when the successive ionization energies of an element are studied, we could derive information concerning the existence of shells in that element and also the existence of subshells in the element. Ionization energy and shells. When the successive electrons are removed from an atom, a fairly regular increase in ionization energy occurs as the electrons are removed from the same shell. You take note, when electrons are removed from the same shell, a fairly regular increase in ionization energy occurs. Now, when electrons are removed from different shells, there is a large jump in ionization energy. So, a large jump in ionization energy is observed when new shells are penetrated. The regular increase and jumps in ionization energy provides evidence for the existence of different shells in an atom. I repeat, the regular increase when we are moving electrons, when we remove electrons from the same shells, and the jumps when we want to penetrate a different shell, they provide evidence for the existence of different shells in an atom. For example, now, the successive ionization energies of beryllium are given on the table on your screen. Now, we have ionization number versus ionization energy in kilojoules per mole. Now, the first ionization energy is 900 kilojoules per mole, second, 1,758. Then we also have 14,905 kilojoules per mole and 21,060 21, kilojoules per mole. So, you observe. This is the first ionization energy. The second is almost about two times the first. But now look at the third. I'm moving from 1,700 to 14,905. This indicates a large increase, a jump in energy. Then you discover that the third, 14,000 and 21,000, they are too close. So the, the only one jump that we've experienced is from the second to the third. Now to clearly see the jump, we can decide to take the ratio of the ionization energies. For example, if we take the first, the second ionization energy divided by the first ionization energy, we have a value of 1.95, that is approximately 2. So this means that the second ionization energy is about two times the first. As a result, twice as much energy will be needed to remove the second electron than the first. That's information we get from it. 
Then now, if we take another ratio, the third ionization energy versus the second, we have a value of 8.5, that is approximately 9. It's a very large increase. So it means that the third ionization energy is about 9 times the second. So this means that 9 times as much energy is needed to remove the third electron than the second. So this tells us about a job, a large increase. So there is a change in shell F. Now, if you go to the ratio, the fourth ionization energy divided by the third, we have a, a value of 1.4, indicating that the fourth and the third electrons are on the same shell because the increase is just regular. So 1.4 times as much energy is needed to remove the fourth electron than the third. So these are the informations we could get from the successive ionization energies of beryllium. There is a regular increase from the first ionization energy to the second ionization energy. So the first and second electrons are in the same shell. That is why there is only a regular increase when we are removing them. Now these electrons are relatively easy to remove with a small amount of ionization energies because the shell in which they are found is a higher energy level shell. That is the second shell. And this is the outermost shell of beryllium. Know that when the shell is far away from the nucleus, the attraction between the nucleus and electrons of that shell is small. And so a small amount of energy is needed to remove them. Now there is a large jump from the second to the third ionization energy. That is the energy required to remove a third electron is about nine times the second. So the third electron is in a different shell. Because that large increase tells us about a jump, a change in shell. We are penetrating a new shell. And the shell is closer to the nucleus. That's why there is an increase. Now, as we are moving closer to the nucleus, the attraction between the electrons on the shells, closer to the nucleus, and the nucleus are stronger, or is strong. So more energy is needed to remove an electron from that shell. So there is a regular increase from a... There is a regular increase from the third, uh, the, from the third to the fourth ionization energy, which means that the third and the fourth electrons are in the same shell, and you see that these electrons are relatively more difficult to remove than the first two, because they are found in a shell that is closer to the nucleus, that is the innermost shell of the electron, and this shell they have is a lower energy value. The principal quantum number of that shell is one. And they are found the inner motion closest to the nucleus. That's why there is a regular increase in ionization energy. So now if you plot the graph of log to the base 10 of successive ionization energies of beryllium versus ionization number, we we'll have a curve as you have on your screen. Now discover that the first two electrons are relatively easy to remove. You see the energy value first and second ionization energies are very low. Now, from the second to the third, there is a large energy jump. Look at a large energy jump. This indicates that we are penetrating a new shell and we are moving closer to the nucleus. You see, this is an energy jump indicating a transition or a movement from one shell to the other. Now, the, fourth, the third electron is on a new shell now. Now, look at from the third to the fourth, there is just a regular increase which means that there are two electrons in the innermost shell of beryllium and there are also two electrons in the outermost shell. You see the two electrons in the innermost shells, they require a higher, they require higher ionization energies relatively compared to the first and second because they are found in the shell closer to the nucleus and the first two, they are found in the outermost shell. So this is a graph of log to the base 10 of ionization energy versus number of electrons removed or ionization number. Now, example, the first six ionization energies in kilojoules per mole of an element A are given below. You have 787 kilojoules per mole, 1,577 kilojoules per mole, 3,230, 4,355, 16,090, and 19,795 kilojoules per mole. A, to what group of the periodic table does the element A belong? 
explain. B. What is the formula of the highest chloride of A? Now, answers. Those are the successive ionization energies of the element A. The first question, to what group of the periodic table does the element A belong? Explain. Now, how can we use this successive ionization energy values to determine the group of the element in the periodic table? Now, we recall, the group number of an element on the periodic table is given by the number of valence electrons of that element. Group 1 elements have one valence electron. Group 2 have two valence electrons. Group 3 have three valence electrons. So if we are able to deduce the number of valence electrons of this element A, we'll be able to get the shell of the group number of the element. So now, how do we get the number of valence electrons of this element? Now, we know that from what we have just seen, oh, that whenever we remove electrons from the outermost shell and they are finished, to get into another shell, there is a large energy jump. The large energy jump tells us we are changing a shell. And since the first, the outermost shell electrons are always easy to remove, so we could then count the number of electrons we remove before getting to that energy jump. If we remove four electrons before getting to the energy jump, it means that there are four electrons in the outermost shell. If we take away one before getting to the jump, then there is one electron in the outermost shell. If we take away five electrons before getting to the jump, then there are five electrons in the outermost shell. So now we shall start by calculating the ratio of successive ionization energies in order to locate the energy jumps. Now we start by taking the second ionization energy divided by the first. If we do that, we have 1577 divided by 787. And this gives us about 2. 2.003 is about 2 times. So it tells us that twice as much energy is needed to remove the second electron than the first. But now, this is not sufficient because we don't know whether it's an energy jump or not. We need to continue. So we go now to the other ratio, the third ionization energy divided by the second ionization energy. When we divide, we have 3,230 divided by 1,577. This gives us about 2, which means that twice as much energy is also needed to remove the second energy than uh, the second electron than to remove the third electron than the second. Twice as much energy is also needed to remove the third electron than the second. That's the information we get from it. Now we go to another ratio, the fourth ionization energy divided by the third ionization energy. We do a calculation, we have 4,355 divided by 3,230. So it gives us approximately 1.4 which tells us 1.4 times as much energy is needed to remove the fourth electron than the third. Now, we continue, we take the fifth ionization energy divided by the fourth, and this gives us 16,090 divided by 4,355. And we have an answer of approximately four. We had two, 1.4, and four. So compared to the other values we've had, four is very large. So four times as much energy is needed to remove the fifth electron than the fourth. So it means that from the fourth to the fifth electron, there is a transition. There is a jump in energy. That is why the number four, that's why uh, the fourth, uh, the fifth is four times the fourth. So it is telling us about the energy jump. And you can look at it clearly from 4,000 to 16,000 is indicative of the fact that there is a jump, an energy jump. So we continue. We go now to the seed ionization energy divided by the feed ionization energy. If we divide, we have 19,795 divided by 16,090. And this gives us 1.2. So 1.2 times as much energy is needed to remove the seed electron than the feed. So we know we've, we notice here that the, from the seed, or from the feed to the seed, there is just a regular increase in ionization energy. So we can conveniently say that since we experience only one jump from the foot to the feed, we know that one, two, three, four electrons were found in the outermost shell, and these other two were found in the innermost shell. 
So we can conclude, therefore, that the energy jump occurred from the foot to the feet electron. So change in shell, this indicates a change in shell from the foot to the feet electron. So it means that there are only four electrons in the valence shell of A. I repeat, since the energy jump only occurred from the foot to the feet electron, it means that the change in shell occurs from the foot to the feet electron. So the first four electrons are valence electrons. So we can conveniently say that four electrons are found in the valence shell of element A. Now that we know the number of valence electrons of element A, we can now deduce the group of element A. So the element A is found in group 4 of the periodic table. Why? This is because the group number is determined by the number of valence electrons. And there are four valence electrons in A. I repeat, the element A is found in group 4 of the periodic table. This is because the group number of an element is determined by the number of valence electrons of that element. And there are four valence electrons in A. So A is a group 4 element. Now, it is important to remember that successive ionization energies of an element can give information on the existence of shells in the element. When successive electrons are removed from an atom, fairly regular increase in ionization energy is observed when electrons are removed from the same shell. When successive electrons are removed from an atom, large jumps in energy are observed when new shells are penetrated. Evaluation. To know how well you have understood this lesson, I want you to answer this question. The successive ionization energies of an element A in kilojoules per mole are given below. Note that A is not the usual symbol of the element. We have 738 kilojoules per mole, 1,451, 7,733, 10,541, 13,620, 17,995, 21,704, 25,657, 31,862, 38,458, 169,996, and 189,371. Those are the successive ionization energies. A. How many energy levels are there in the element? Explain. B. To what group of the periodic table is the element found? And C. Sketch a graph of log to the base 10 of successive ionization energy versus ionization number for A. So, answers. We begin. How many energy levels are there in the element A? Explain. How many energy levels are there in the element A? Explain. Now, to get the number of energy levels in this element A, we simply struggle to get where the energy jumps occur. If we know the number of shells or the number of energy jumps, we'll be able to deduce the number of shells and the energy levels of the element. So if there is one energy jump, it means that there are two shells. One energy jump indicates you are moving from one shell to the other. If there are two energy jumps, then there are three shells. The first from the first shell to the second, and the second energy jump from the second shell to the third shell. So two energy jumps, three energy levels. One energy jump, two energy levels. Three energy jumps, four energy levels. That is the logic. So now we are going to struggle to get all the energy jumps from the methods we've just seen previously. And you, as I said, you could either calculate the ratios of the successive ionization energies, or you could look at the difference, observe and get the difference clearly. Okay, now let's struggle to get the difference clearly before calculating. So if you check, you see, moving from 738 to 1,451 is almost about two times. The difference is not too great. From uh, 1,000 to 7,000, there is a large increase. 
from 1,000 to 7,000 compared to the first, there is a large increase. Now, from 7,000 to 10,000, they are close. 10,000 to 13,000, they are close. 13,000 to 17,000, they are close. 17 to 21,000, still close. 21 to 25,000, it is still close. From 25 to 31,000, it is only regular increase. From 31 to 38, regular increase. Now, from 38,000 to 169,996, there is a large increase. So, there is also a jump here. So, there is a jump here. Then, from 169,000 to 189,000, the increase is regular. So, we can identify two energy jumps there. So, if there are two energy jumps, then there are three energy levels. So, now, let's calculate the ratio to see clearly where the energy jumps occur or to confirm what we have just seen. Now, on your table, you have the ratios of the various ionization energies. You have the second divided by the first, which gives us approximately two. You go to the third divided by the second, it gives us 5.3. So you see, there is a jump. So the third ionization energy is 5.3 times the second. So 5.3 times as much energy is needed to remove the third electron compared to the, uh, the second, which means that there is an energy jump here. If you take the fourth divided by the third, it's only 1.3 times regular increase. The fifth divided by the four, 1.3 times a regular increase. Okay, now if you take uh, the C divided by the fifth, there is 1.3 times its regular increase. Seven divided by the C, 1.2 times is still a regular increase. C, uh, that is the 8 divided by the 7 is also 1.2 times a regular increase. The 9 divided by the 8 is 1.2 times a regular increase. The 10 divided by the 9 is 1.2 times a regular increase. Now, from the 11 to the 10, I have 4.4 times. So, there is also an energy jump. So, energy jump from the 10 to the 11th electron. We saw the first energy jump from the second to the third. Now we are experiencing a second energy jump from the 10 to the 11. Now if you go to the 12 divided by the 11 ionization energy, we have 1.1, which shows that it's still a regular increase. So now it means that there are changes in shell from the second to the third electron removed and from the 10 to the 11 electron removed. So there are three energy levels in the element A. This is because the first two electrons belong to one shell, the outermost shell. They are relatively easy to remove with the smallest amount of energy compared to the others. The third to the tenth electron belong to the second shell, that is a non valent shell. And the last two electrons belong to the third shell, the innermost shell. So three shells, two, three energy levels, two transitions. So B, to what group of the periodic table is the element found? Now, what did we see? We saw that there were two electrons removed before the first energy jump. Those two electrons belong to the first shell, the outermost shell. So we can conveniently say that the element A is found in group 2 of the periodic table because element A has two valence electrons. Now, see, sketch a graph of log of successive ionization energies versus ionization number for element A. If you plot the graph of log to the base 10 of successive ionization energies versus ion, uh, ionization number, we have the shape that you have on your screen. There are two electrons that are easy to remove. The easiest, there is an energy jump from the second to the third, the first change in shell. Now we remove the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, ninth, and tenth electron that are found in another shell that is a non valent shell. And then now these two electrons with the highest amount of energy needed are uh, those in the shells closest to the nucleus. So this is a graph of log to the base 10 of ionization energies versus number of electrons removed. So assignment. Before our next lesson, I'd like you to answer this question. The first eight successive ionization energies of an element M in kilojoules per mole, where M is not the usual symbol of the element, are given. To what group of the periodic table does M belong? Explain. Suggest the formula and bonding type of the oxide of M. 
references. Chemistry for IB Diploma by Steve Owen. Advanced Chemistry by Michael Cloxton and Rosalind Fleming. Chemistry in Context by Graham Hill and John Holland. Complete Advanced Level Chemistry by Ule Emmanuel Eno and the Internet. We have come to the end of this lesson. Our next lesson will be on ionization energy and subshells. See you in the next lesson. Una tege si ma tege yop, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege majang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mut, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina bia jinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike. Tam tam atonge tam zabike tam 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 amote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injubya yen